Hi, I'm Eileen Hallman, and um, people ask me all the time about plying on the charka. And um, the charka is not actually designed for plying, and in India, they spin and they send the yarn to the weavers and the weavers weave and they weave with singles so there is no plying and the charka is not really good for plying. I have discovered this really cute trick that I'm calling global fusion or cultural fusion. I've been spinning on the charka now for about 30 years and I just recently discovered that if you place the spindle in this position that it lines up perfectly with that eyelet and you can do a Navajo three-ply on a Turkish spindle. So the global fusion part is the Indian charka or maybe some Peruvian cotton or some American cotton, the Navajo three-ply and then the Turkish spindle. So I'm going to start the Navajo three-ply. I'm going to turn this around a little bit. So I do it this way. I make that loop and then I keep tension with my left hand. And then I park that there and just allow this to fold back on itself. Okay, so now I have a strand I can start with on the spindle. So here I'm making a really simple Turkish spindle with two popsicle sticks and a number three Brittany bamboo needle. And the bamboo needle has a tiny little notch right here. The needle is a number three. It's three and a half millimeters. And uh, if you have a 964 drill bit, you can just drill two holes in two popsicle sticks. And then uh, what I do is I put one on and then the second one, I put my end through it. Um, if you're not familiar with a Turkish spindle, uh, it makes a center pull ball. So in order for the center to pull out, you've got to start it there. So um, I put that there. And these will rotate for a little while, but then, um, then it will line up. So I go over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two. And I'm checking here just to see the length. And at, at um, some point, I'll make my half hitch, connect it there to my notch. And now, um, now we're going to start um, plying. So. I spun it Z, so I'm going to ply it S. Mary, you should move in because I, if I move in, I'm going to get the door. Good. Okay, now this was live. Um, I just spun this so you can see that it's balanced because the loop does not uh, twist back on itself. So I was going over one and under two. Now I'm, and what that does is it builds a pyramid on this side. So now I'm going to build a pyramid on the other side. So I'm going to go over two and under one. That's basically how um, how you do that um, Navajo three ply on a Turkish spindle. And I park it um, when I stop the loop. I usually park it like this so that I've got my fingers in the loop and I, I have use of my hand but I can easily um, start the ply again. Over one, under two, over one, under two, and it doesn't matter if you get lost in your sequence. And so by doing it two and one, um, you avoid making figure eights that would just all fall apart, so it holds it together better.
Okay, so you can see that I'm at the end now of my um, of my yarn. So I'm going to untwist that, and um, let's just say that I wanted to add more, which I don't really um, right now. But this is one spindle's worth, and it's hard to come off the spindle at this point. So. Um, I'm going to show you how this has been on the spindle now for a while and it may not have a lot of active twist. So if I did want to um, add to it, um, I'm twisting this here and I just want to add fluff to fluff and it picks up the twist. And now I'm going to show you, if you're not familiar with the Turkish spindle, how to um, disassemble it so you've got the center pull ball. So I'll just go finish wrapping that around. You pull the spindle out and I'm going to pull this out and there's the so there's the center pull ball. And you can knit with that or weave with it or whatever, whatever you want. So I'll just put that in the little basket. These balls here were uh, probably two spindles worth, I don't really remember right now. So have fun with it! <laughs>